this program will succeed and will change lives. And what is so touching for me this morning that every single one of you young men here have somebody sitting by your side saying to you that I'm here like my grandmother to ensure that you travel down the right pathway to success. The colors on this banner is not by accident because you represent the red, which is vibrancy. Also, you represent that green, which is growth, new growth. And believe me, the success of the gold, that at the end, your value, your worth, will be seen by everybody. There are a lot of doubters. They believe that you wouldn't make it. But you have to believe in yourself that you are the red, the green, and the gold. I wish I can live long enough that I can hear via social media or maybe by hologram in the future that you can see that today brought about a 360 degree change in your life. You have to believe in yourself and the ministry, we are going to stand close to you and provide all that we can to ensure that you succeed. I want to welcome you. You, and I'm speaking to you, the participants. I want to welcome you, valued, cared for, and potential leaders of this country to this ceremony. Welcome your parents. And welcome all of the supporters, teachers, staff, whoever you may be, that your continued prayers, support, and guidance would make this program a success. But not that. Would change the landscape of Grenada because we are going to change the future of Grenada. Welcome and enjoy the program. Thank you very much, P.S. Ando, for that warm welcome this morning. I know some of you might be wondering what STAR means. Um, so to give us an overview of the STAR program, I invite our district education officer, Ms. Kathy and James. Thank you, Madam Chair. I must say how pleased I am to see my boys looking so lovely this morning. And give me the smile, lovely. Honorable Minister of Education, Honorable Emily Pierre, Minister of, Minister of Education, Human Resource Development, Religious Affairs and Information. P.S. Andal. Mr. Chaitan, our coordinator. Parents, teachers, principal, well-wishers, all. I would give you a synopsis of the STAR program a program that was developed to ensure that we protect, we care, and we meet the needs of our young boys, our young men, the boys of Grenville Secondary School and other secondary schools coming to the future to ensure that we give them that hope, that sort of love, that sort of caring, that sort of interest, meeting their needs to guide them and to change their mindset and give them that level so that they would be able to shine. STAR is a six-month program. The first three weeks of the program, the students will be living on camp. They will be there going through a process where they would be ensuring that their self be looked at. They would be looking at refocusing. They'd be looking at their psychological support. We'd be looking at their physical support. And we also will be looking at academic support. So the children would be removed from this institution for six months. However, within the six months of the program, the three weeks, we have to work with them to ensure that we bring them to the standard where they would be able to receive the full force of the program. So they would be on camp, guided by Mr. Niels Chaitan and assisted by Mr. Samuel Latouche and other stakeholders who would work with them to ensure their success. The boys were consulted with, with their parents, 
we have spoken to the school, we have ensured that we have done the groundwork to ensure that these boys get the best of what we need them to get. So after the six months, we have a lot of things in store, but while we are looking at a six month duration, the six months comes with a lot of support. So after the three weeks, the students will be engaged into classes that would look at the academics, would look at the talents and skills, would look at the physical growth, would look at the social and psychological growth. While they are in the institution for four days, one day of that day in the week, they will be reintegrated into their normal school setting. So they would be back at Grenville Secondary School getting to understand what is happening. This program is not to just remove the boys from Grenville Secondary School, but to put programs in place to ensure that they are able to be successful in the future. They are able to reach their fullest potential and they are able to move away from some of the challenges and obstacles that are affecting their behavior. So we are working with them to become that beacon, that shining light, that star which we have created. While we are working with the students, the parents would not be left undone. The parents would be engaged in a parenting program, and this program will be facilitated by different stakeholders from the Ministry of Social Development, from persons associated with the program related to, to Mr. Chaitan, and other stakeholders within the community. So we'll be working with the parents, and the parents would be engaged while they are being engaged, they also would be providing us with community service. And the community service will be related to the school that the children are attached to, Grenville Secondary School. So they would be working with Grenville Secondary School, will be providing their needs, and while we are providing their needs, it's not just about coming to a parenting program, but a program that meets the needs of the parents so that they would be able to help the children when they are with them. The school will also be worked with. So what we will be having is that the teachers and other students, they have to learn how to embrace. And they have to learn also how to deal with changes that are happening around them. So we are there within this program to ensure that the children, when they are coming back to the school, the school is prepared for them. And the school will encourage them. And all of what we are doing would not just be for the children, but we are building on Grenville Secondary amidst all that is happening. We cannot work with children, school, and parents if we do not work with the community. So while we are working with the children, the parents, and the school, we are also working with the community, ensuring that the community is prepared to support the children when they are in the community. So the behaviors that they are engaged in would be positive behaviors. There would be mentors assigned to the students so that they, when they return to their communities, they have persons that they can talk to. We have to have what we will call all stakeholders on board with this program. STAR is not just you pull students out and you leave them alone. If we do not work with the school, we do not work with the community, we do not work with parents, we would not move anywhere with the STAR program. So during the six months, these stakeholders will be engaged. And while engaging the school, the community, the parents, the students, we are also engaging other stakeholders within, the, within our trial and state to provide that support. So we are um, working with the Royal Grenada Police Force, who are going to provide some support for us. We are also working with the Ministry of Social Development, who would also provide support, Ministry of Sports and Culture would also be on board to provide that support for us while we are going forward. The students will be well taken care of. What is required from parents is that they ensure that the children attend the program and they provide the support for the program. Meals, materials that the children would have to use, engaging the students, getting them to the location where they're supposed to be, 
will all be provided from by the Ministry of Education. And we are working diligently to ensure that all of these things are in place to meet the needs of the children. The students will be assessed periodically to ensure that we are meeting their needs and not that we supposedly doing something. So every individual would have their own portfolio, which would highlight their strengths, the areas for improvement, and the progress going forward. The program would not just be that the facilitators are working and would not be assessed. Assessment would also, and evaluation would be periodically for us to understand if we are meeting the needs and ensuring that our students are able to function and be positive individuals. Our aim is not for our children to become the statistics to end up in jail or juvenile center, but our aim is for our students to become productive citizens. Citizens where who we respect, citizens who shine, and citizens who understand they have a purpose in life. And their purpose is to ensure that the students, to ensure that they, the students, become one that everyone is appreciative of. These young boys we have in front of us with their guardian, their parents, and the teachers who are surrounding them and the facilitators who would be part of the program and the persons who are coordinating the program, they are here because of the need that we have seen to provide a different dynamics to ensure that we meet the needs of our students and prevent them from going down the path of destruction. If we have looked at the statistics over the past years with regards to juveniles, we have noticed that we have a number of juvenile cases which are ending up before our courts. We do not want our children here or any other child within Grenada, Carrico, and Putimaknik to understand they have no choice or there is no hope for them. We are the hope that we are going to put forward for our boys and this program, the STAR program, the program that looked at, look at the behaviors of the boys, look at how we can meet their needs, look at how we can support them and their parents and the community is a program that is looking at providing support. And it's open to the boys. It is not a program that is forced on the boys because of the consultation that we have, have done to ensure that the boys understand that we are giving them another chance, a chance to make a difference, a chance to be a model individual in society. So ladies and gentlemen, the STAR program, all right? The STAR program, which focuses on early identification and development of intervention program to meet the needs of all of the students, which focuses on school engagement, parental involvement, community mobilization, assessment of students to, to ensure that they are progressing in a way that is beneficial to them is a program that we are looking to, to set and to ensure that when we set this program that we are protecting, we are ensuring, and we are providing the necessary support that our students would be able to reach the maximum, maximum potential would shine, will glow, will become a beacon with the support that we are giving them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. James. Ladies and gentlemen, to lighten things up a bit, I now invite to the stage Omar Bob, a student of the Grenville Secondary School, who is gonna do a monologue for us entitled, Food. Everybody. 
master cook. What we know but cookbook. Nowadays, the fireside gets cold. Fast food is in control. If it's not Subway, it's KFC. A sense of junk in your belly. Pizza, ha! Oil down the Trinidad. <laughs> Them things could make your arteries hard. <laughs> now you complaining, you have to do some walking. But people, it's time for this to stop. Go back to grandma's kitchen. Shadow many. Green seasoning. Thank you very much for that, Omar Bob. Talented young man indeed. With our youth, the possibilities are endless. Thank you so much again for that. She is very passionate about this initiative and wants to ensure that this program goes on without a hitch. I admire her dedication and love for children and education on a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to invite at this time Honorable Emlyn Pierre, the Minister for Education, to give her remarks. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Let me recognize this morning our permanent secretary who has stepped out to deal with an emergency matter, the Ministry of Education. And may I say the fact that we are here this morning with the weight that we carry is really an indication of our support for this program. I want to especially recognize also our special guest, Inspector Bascom and Mr. Noel, Officer Noel from the Royal Grenada Police Force. I also especially recognize the principal, deputy principal, the management team of the school, and all other teachers and counselors who are present, Mr. Chaitan and Mr. Latouche and other members of the team who are gonna be holding this initiative together other officers from the Ministry of Education who are present, our parents, our students, good morning to everybody. I am tempted to start by saying, and I don't know why in the last two days I've been quoting songs, it's a new season, it is a new day. And those words of a very popular song actually captures how I feel this morning as it relates to this program. Because I believe what we are going to be doing through this initiative is given another opportunity to all of the students who are going to be participating, another opportunity that can change their lives forever. It was said that I'm very passionate about this, and anyone who knows me well would know that programs like these do still my heart. There's a special place in my heart for initiatives like these. And it is the reason that I feel so passionate about this specific program. I want to commend our parents and our students this morning, and you may wonder why. I'm starting with you. As I walked this morning from the vehicle, I had to say to Mrs. Noel that I was pleasantly impressed with the fact that you made such an effort to be here on time this morning. And I looked at you with the students walking through your children 
walking through the gates, and I thought to myself after, this must be a great start. It must be a good foot to start off on. I want to also use this opportunity to recognize all of the efforts of the principal past, the former acting principal, and all of the teachers of the school for all their efforts, all their sacrifices, and all that has been done over the years to support the students in this program. Now, I always like to look at life as imperfection. We never get anything perfect. And so if I ask you, what would you focus on? It probably might be very easy to focus on all the things that should have been done, that wasn't done, and who should have, and who didn't. And I take a different view of life. And I always look at what could be done. What different approaches can we take? How can we work together? And so this morning, I am not going to look back except to remember the first official inspection that I facilitated, which was at this very school. And I must say, this is not my alma mater. This is not the school that I attended. But there's something about Grenville Secondary School I have to confess this morning, and I believe my team recognizes this. There's something about Grenville Secondary School that causes me to tick. And I mean tick in relation to wanting to do something to provide some extra special support. And this is not biasness in any way. <laughs> I'm saying this morning, I strongly believe that we are doing the right thing. I visited this school, don't remember the month right now, but it was the first inspection according to the laws of Grenada that the Minister for Education is to facilitate. And I had an encounter together with the principal at the time when we engaged a student on this floor. And I remember Ms. James was present. And following the inspection, which took many hours, she would remind you that we had a very deep conversation right here on the compound of the school about the need to give added support to this institution. And I remember saying to her, I don't know how, but we are going to find a way because we must do a special program to give special support to this school. I recall presenting to cabinet the concept of STAR and what we are considering to do at this school because of course there are some financial implications and you know it is extremely difficult times. And I was really astonished at how quickly my colleagues responded and said, Minister, why are we doing just one area? Because at that time, it was not just students of this school. There were students from another school included but we decided, based on COVID-19, based on some financial challenges that we have, we are going to restrict the pilot to one school at this time. So this first six months would be one school immediately after we are going to be expanding. And so the question was, why not in every constituency? That was the question posed to me. Because my colleagues felt that a program like this, they would like to give support in their constituency, for schools in their constituency. And I had to say to them, let us take it slow, <laughs> right? Let us start one at a time, as old people would say. We are going to do this, we're going to get it right, and then we're going to expand nationally. I've had principals call me to ask if there's any way that the school can be part of the pilot. And I said, there's a reason why we are trying to restrict it. Start small and then expand. 
And so this morning, I am saying this to say that this school is indeed fortunate that you are going to be leading this initiative, which I am confident, without a shadow of a doubt this morning, that it will be a success in Jesus' name. I am quite used, and especially when you're in the job that I do, that you hear a lot more of the negatives than the positives. Everything cannot work. There is a problem with everything. Nothing could work. But I say to us this morning, I believe that there are sufficient persons who understand the, important of this, the importance of this program, who are willing to make it happen. And I believe history will not forgive us. As a matter of fact, there's something even more than history that would not forgive us for not doing something more. So I'm not saying we're not doing. But history will not forgive us if we did not do everything that we could have done. And that is why I said to my team, I am not saying that we are not doing. So we have excellent teachers. In some cases, and I have to say this, not everyone falls into that category. And I don't think anybody would prove me wrong there. We have excellent counselors in some cases. We have excellent parents in some cases. We have excellent people in communities in some cases. But the question that is significant to ask is, have we done all that we could have done? Is there anything, and I don't know why I'm quoting songs like this, <laughs> is there any unfinished task that we have? Is there anything left, anything more that we can do? And you see, sometimes when we focus on the negative, it prevents us from finding that positive thing that can make a difference. And so forgive me, I'm not gonna focus on the negative. My focus is how can we help to save the lives of these young people? How can we ensure that they have a story to tell that will motivate everyone that would come behind them. As I say this, and I'm quite sure I'm going to bore anybody who works at the Ministry of Education now because they've probably heard this story over and over again, of a young man, and I'm just going to share one very quickly with you, a young man from the Birch Grove area I'm quite sure um, Officer Noel is quite aware of who I'm speaking about. And we started this initiative in the same way as we are starting now, with persons who felt it cannot work, it won't work, these children, they won't do, they won't that, they won't this. The parents won't support, we won't get anywhere, we're wasting time, we're wasting money. And we started that program amidst all of the concerns. And sometimes we just need to give something a chance. Sometimes we just have to give something a chance. Sometimes even to start with faith only. Sometimes just faith is enough to start. And we started this program. And we said to every principal in a primary school in Grenada, can you send us every child that you have in that school who failed common entrance once, twice, three times, and who, based on your assessment, you don't believe they're going to pass the school leaving. And I was actually amazed when I saw these boys turn up at the Youth Development Center in Grandance. We had two buses, taking some as far as St. Patrick's, carrying them down to the Youth Center in Grand Dance. And we work with those boys. At that time, I believe it was a year or two years was the, the length of that program. So in their case, there was no plan for them to go back to the school. They were just there marking time in some cases. And we work with these boys. And when I see them today, I mean, my heart smiles. 
because it sometimes takes just one person or half of a person to believe that something is possible. But I want to share my experience with one of these boys who to me is like a son today. I always describe him as the joker in the park, in the pack. And to me, that's how I see him or saw him then. If the wind blow, he would laugh. Everything is funny. Everything is just funny for him. But I got very attached to that little boy or young boy then because I remember the story of his mother. His mother actually died in that accident in Baltazar so many years ago that time. Well, some of you wouldn't even have a clue what PTS mean. <laughs> that was the days of the PTS. And for me, it was touching. Why? Not just because she died, that too. But I was supposed to be on the bus that afternoon. That's the bus I traveled with every afternoon. And that afternoon, I don't know what happened. I did not take that bus. And that boy walked into my office at the youth center. At the time, I was the deputy coordinator of youth. And he said to me, Ms. Pierre, I want to go in the British Army. And I'll be very honest with you, I shared a story a million times before, I'm sure. I actually laughed when he said that. I actually, I confess, I laughed. Because in front of me was someone who laughed at everything. If the wind blow, he would laugh. And he's telling me that he wants to go in the British Army where this is serious business. And I actually laughed. But when he came about the third time, and at that time, my husband actually visited, and he was sitting right there. And he put up his finger and he said, Mr. Pierre, talk to Ms. Pierre for me. I tell her I want to go in the British Army. That's how we did it in the morning. And after I saw those, that finger pointing, I went straight to the embassy and I got the form for him. And I came back, I remember asking him, I said, are you sure that you know what you're asking for? Do you have anybody in England? Would your grandmother, because he was living with his grandmother, would your grandmother sign the form? He said, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, I go in, I go in. Long story short, he left for England. He did. He got accepted to join the army. And then I didn't hear about him for a couple years. And it was about two weeks after Hurricane Ivan. I was already in labor pain because my son was born just around two weeks after Ivan. And I heard this horn, toot, 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 toot. Remember I told you the joker in the back? He, he plays about everything. Everything is funny. So toot, 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 this horn just will not stop. And I thought, but who could be doing something like that when everybody is already so stressed out over Ivan? And there was that young man that I was speaking about. Came out of the van. I almost did not recognize him. He was this tall. And he was laughing, as usual. And he came upstairs, he hugged me, and he started telling me his stories of where he went, where he just came from, and the promotion that he just got in the British Army. Well, of course, I had to look back at when I laughed. The same person was standing in front of me, just got promoted in the British Army. And about two years after, I'm sitting there again, toot, 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 toot. He makes fun of everything. And he walks up the step with a piece of paper. Mrs. Pear, I came here to invite you to my wedding in England. And I say, oh gosh, which is the ticket to go to England? Well, at that time, maybe if Zoom was so popular, I might have taken in the wedding by Zoom. But I missed the wedding. I couldn't afford to go to England just to attend his wedding. But I was so happy for him. Saw him about two, three months ago when his grandmother died. He would not come to Grenada and not visit my home. That same boy. 
But what it takes is just one person, a mother, a father, a teacher, a counselor, a some one person, any person, believing that something good is possible. So I'm not prepared, I'm not interested in hearing the stories of what happened last year, year before, who went to Bacolet, I'm not really interested in that. What I'm interested in right now is that somebody understands that there is hope. And that somebody understands that it is possible to succeed regardless of your past. It doesn't matter how people define you. What is most important is how you define yourself. And that is why I'm excited about this. I'm looking forward to this. And I believe that despite the challenge that this could be, and this will possibly be, I know without a doubt that God is going to walk with us and we are going to come out of this recognizing that it was the right thing to do. I'll close by saying, for me, what I acknowledge within the program that is significant is the fact that the program is going to intervene not just for the students, for parents, for communities, and for this school. And I left this school for last because I believe that this program, even with the boys that it's working with, is also going to have a major impact right here at the school. And I'm gonna be speaking to the teachers after with regards to this. So I just wanna wish everyone all the best. I'm very grateful for the support from our partners. Please convey to the Commissioner of Police the support that they are gonna give and I believe the selection of persons for this program is an understanding that this is not a military response. This is a response of support, right? And I'm really, really, really excited this morning. This has actually made my day that this ceremony is happening. May God bless us all, and may those who come behind us find us faithful. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Before we go any further, at this time, I want to um, extend apologies on behalf of the Chief Education Officer, Mrs. Angela Finley, um, who is absent with us today because she had a very important family event to attend, but she sends her best wishes. Oh, her aunt is burying today, yes. And as you heard, because of the importance of this program or this initiative, the minister and her team at the Ministry of Education carefully selected the persons who are going to be part of the implementation of the program. Our next presenter is an international social skills and crime reduction consultant and motivational speaker who will be one of our program's leads. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage Dr. Niels Chaitan. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here today. Uh, let me, first of all, uh, follow the protocol and, and salute our Minister of Education, uh, a dear friend, a lady that I've come to know very well, and Ms. Mrs. Pierre, as you spoke, I got goosebumps. Um, I also want to salute the PS, who is not here, and all the ladies and gentlemen that I have come to know um, I, want to, I want to recognize uh, my friend um, and colleague, Ms. Etienne, uh, education officer, Ms. James, Kathy and James, and of course, tall and handsome Mr. Etienne, who is going to be taking up his new position here, or has already taken it up as a new principal. Uh, then, of course, I must go down to my, my colleagues. And I see right at the corner there, uh, Mr. Samuel Latouche. Ladies and gentlemen, he will be part of our team, um, a colleague and an assistant. Then we have uh, Inspector Bascom. You know, I saw him in his khaki uniform and did not recognize him in his juvenile tight pants, looking good this morning. Um, along with him, of course, we have from uh, 
a sergeant, I want to make sure I have it right here, Sergeant Noel, Thomas, sorry, from, from Grenville Police Station. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to, I want to thank God this morning because I'm blessed, Minister. My wife is here. My wife is here. Um, COVID locked her out in Canada where we live for 37 years where our children and grandchildren are. She got locked out there for five and a half months. And it's a good thing, young fellas, young men, my boys, it's a good thing mommy taught me to cook and iron. I saw you guys came in this morning. You were looking spanking new. Right? Really nice and iron and clean. And that's what we Grenadians men do, right? And so I thank my, I'm glad, I'm glad, thankful to God that he brought my wife in. She is Grenadian from St. Patrick, um, uh, Ontario, kindergarten teacher. So she's going to be, Miss Pierre, I wanted to know that she's going to be volunteering her time with us on the team. All right? So thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to talk to you for a little about the term brand. And young gentlemen, I know you like brand names, don't you? Yes. There's a difference between Nike, Nike Air, and Air. In Toronto, Nike Air sells for about 169. Air, just Air. Sell for 29. What do you know, Miss? It looks the same, you know. And the, the, the strange thing about it, when you turn them upside down, they both say made in Taiwan. Once, because somebody put the name behind it. Michael Jordan has a shoe that sells for $599 US, and it comes in a little suitcase. Bro, if I have that, I'm not wearing it. I'm not wearing it. And if I'm, about, if I'm going to wear it, I'm going to make sure I walk on air. Because it's just too expensive. This is the power of a brand. So I want to talk to you a little young men, mothers and daddies and colleagues all about brand. Because brand is important. You see, when I was born, as you know my story already, I told you, I was given my brand. I had a crazy brand. Who calls a little boy from Grenville? Niels. What is Niels? <laughs> Minister, that thing hurt me. Niels. The person that gave me that name didn't say Neil. I like Neil. Neil Diamond. <laughs> you know, Neil. Neil Young. <laughs> hold, hold a second. Neil Armstrong. They gave me Neil's. That thing hurt me. I went to Methodist school and you were here the last time, boys, and you heard my story. Been bullied by a girl. Because that name damages you. Parents, I'm asking you to be careful what you call your children. Some men were upset with them. And we look at them and they remind us of the father who is not part of their life. Come on here now. I'm going to be talking straight today. I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, minister for change. And sometimes that boy's father annoyed you, mama. Because you weren't sure about this man. Oh boy, somebody's going to be angry with me. I'm going to say it anyway. I know the boy is in school in form three, form two. And you get no support, and you're angry with who? Not the boy, the father. And watch where the brand come now. Watch where the brand come now. You gave the boy a nice name, you know, Marcus. <laughs> like, like the great Marcus Garvey. I hope I'm not calling anybody's name. You gave the boy Marcus. That's a powerful name. But you change it all of a sudden. Stupid! Ah! She's like you ugly, like a father. And you know I'm saying father, you know, you're not putting tongue between teeth, you know. Father, you see how you ugly like your father? You see how your nose big like your father? Hold on a second. You see how you're black like you, as well, being black is a problem. We're going to be talking all about that. You ladies and gentlemen, what's happening in North America now is a racial divide. Whites against blacks. We have it here too. It's called shedism. 
That's why people are bleaching like crazy in the Caribbean. I went to Jamaica. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm doing a camp in Jamaica. And I was there last year working with a Jamaican constabulary force, sir. And I saw a little boy walk in. Handsome boy, looking like rice and peas. The bleach didn't take good. So there were blotches all over him. He wants to change his brand. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I tell you what. I write as a crime columnist for Caribbean News Now out of Texas, which is now Caribbean News Global. You could check it out. Just go online and put it in. I write a monthly column for them, and I wrote an article, which I have with me. I have a hard copy. By the way, Miss Moore, it's good to see you, Annette Moore. I have to stop a little to say hi to you because your mother was my teacher that helped shape me to be I am today. And I wish she was sitting right by you. All right, Paul Amo. Ladies and gentlemen, I wrote an article, and listen to what it was called. There are no bad boys. And I believe in my heart. You see, ladies and gentlemen, be careful what you say. Because understand what the word bad is. We humans can't deal with bad. Bad is a supernatural word. The opposite of bad is what? Come on, come on, students. The opposite of bad is what? Good. And good is a derivative from the word God. You add an O and you get good. And evil is a derivative from the word devil. Oh, we didn't figure that out, right? So when you say good and bad, that is out of our domain. Inspector, we can't deal with that. When you say a boy is bad, I can't change bad. <laughs> Only God could change bad and make bad good. So we have to be a little more strategic. Listen to what the article says, just one paragraph. There are no bad boys. And that was written in 2017. After 20 years, that's me writing, of dealing with crime and criminals internationally, I have come to the conclusion that there are no bad boys. From working closely with boys that are criminally charged, boys in jail, or boys who display a propensity to crime and evil, I am convinced that they are not bad, but a colon. And I want you to listen for yours. Because I have a few in there. Listen. They are misguided boys. You see, when I say misguided, we could deal with that. We could deal with that. They are hurt boys. They are traumatized boys. They are, oh ho, grief stricken boys. You know, and we say a big man not cry. Our little boys fall off the bikes or whatever it is, and they bruise their knees, and the father, macho father, stand with his male ego and say, Boy, swallow it up. Because boys are not supposed to cry. And we stifle the emotions until, ladies and gentlemen, that emotion blow one day and they do something tragic. You're not a bad boy. He just a grief stricken boy that was not dealt with. What other boys we have? Uh, disappointed boys. Hey, come on, boys. Fathers, even adults in the house. Have you seen yours? Negative labeled boys. Rejected boys. Low self-esteem boys, depressed boys, fatherless boys, bullied boys. I know what that feels like. I was bullied at Methodist school by a girl, a big girl too. I was a little boy and they changed my brand. You know, minister already didn't like Niels, Chaitan. I don't know where that came from, by the way. You know, up to today, people see me, Dr. Chaitan, uh, is he Chinese or Filipino or something? No, I'm, I'm from Grenville, Grenada. Huh? And they still changed that name. I didn't like from Niels. And guess what they call me? The bully called me Toothpick. Because <laughs> I was small and skinny. Toothpick. 
change my brand, right? Oh boy, sexually assaulted boys. We live in a new, a new age, eh? You remember when girls were sexually assaulted? No, boys are being sexually assaulted. And by the way, tell them, let me break into my Grenadian. Tell them big woman, leave all of the boys alone. Because they're 14 and 15 and they shoot up and they're tall. They're not ready for that. Big woman, I say it in the camera, leave all boys alone. Let them grow up. Let them go through their maturation. Physical and mental and emotional maturation. Stop taking advantage because of you. You're trying to scratch away. Wait, each way it's scratch for you. So you want interfering with boys. Sexual assault. And the poor boys don't know because they think a man's supposed to just be, you know, a ram goat, man. So they're going to boast too. Hey, guess what, man? I got a big woman, you know. It's like a feather in the cap, man. My boys, my boys coming with, with us up there, it's going to be fun, trust me. We're going to have a good time. But ladies and gentlemen, please understand, it is a mind rewiring exercise. Finally, unwanted and unloved boys. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in St. Kitts and Nevis for the last three years, working there with the Ministry of National Security and the St. Kitts and St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. And I met a criminal guy. They say he was the worst criminal in St. Kitts and Nevis. When I approached him, he, he towered above me about probably about six, four, six, five. I look like a little peep squeak to that guy. I went to him and I wanted to hear his brand. The police told me who he, who he was. And I decided I'm going to go to find him. And when I approached him, he thought I was a police. He said, you're a poor poor or what? I said, guy, you're watching me, a little skinny guy like me, and call me a poor poor, you're crazy or what? And I read this article to him. I asked him who he really was. Listen to his answer to me. And the police told me that. He said to me, sir, I am the worst criminal in St. Kitts and Nevis. I said, oh my goodness, what am I doing here? This guy could kill me, man. But I look beyond, you know there's a sign? He looks beyond our faults and see our needs. And I looked at the tall young man, 28 years old. Oh my goodness, that's my second son. That boy in a hug from a daddy, man. Don't be scared, man. Give him a hug. And I held on to him. I'm probably just hugging around his waist because he's tall. But he looked at me like a crazy man. And I read him this article. I read him this article. And ladies and gentlemen, before I got to the end, he picked up about five different guys he was. Unloved, unwanted. Oh my God, my eyes filled with tears. Fatherless, hurt, traumatized. Ladies and gentlemen, I work with this young man. Our father, today, he's holding a government job. Put your hands together for this young man, not me, not me, not me. Hold on, a government job. Uh, and he said to me, Dr. Chaitan, come, 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 come and see. And he opened a little hut that he was living in there, sir. And he showed me a little baby boy lying on a mosquito net, six months old. And I said to him, Travis, you see, he gave me a nickname. He gave me Apple, whatever Apple means, that's what he goes by. I said, don't give me no Apple. Your mother don't give me no Apple. Man, what did your mother give you? And she said, Travis. I said, She probably liked Randy Travis, you know. She probably liked his music. So there was a reason your mother gave you a name, Travis. And as we opened the door, I saw this baby. And I said to him, Travis, you don't want to happen to you. Happen to your baby. He said, No, sir. Today, Travis is a supervisor in what is called a step program in St. Kitts and Nevis. Ladies and gentlemen, all we want to do, all we'll be doing, Mr. Sam Latouche, very experienced man, Inspector Bascom, and all those, Ms. James, all those involved, Ms. Etienne, all we want to do is to rebrand your son. But when we rebrand him, 
And he comes home and is walking conf- confidently. Because he's arguing with us. You know some boys like that? Just like to argue parents. You know what I'm talking about? Just argue. Hello. That's what lawyers do. And get paid well. They go to court and they argue like crazy. But we got to teach them to argue respectfully. How about that? He could make you some money. When we, he comes home and we say, hey man, you are our attorney. And he comes home to you, mama. Don't call him stupid, please. Don't rebrand him. Because you're upset. Have mercy. You might have been the cause for what that boy is. I know, ladies and gentlemen, in Toronto, I have three boys. My wife and myself. And in, in my trying to build an international business, it took me away. I had to take my boys, take them out to dinner. And big men know and tell them, I'm sorry. Apologize. Don't feel too big to apologize. Because you may have been the cause of what you're experiencing. Rebrand them. That's what we'll be doing. We will be rebranding them professionally. But I'm happy to let you know that we'll also be invoking our God to help us. Is it okay? Our God to help us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking for a great time. Young men, this is not prison, man. This is fun. I'm already packing. I put my trumpet in. I got two trumpets. I have them in. My piano. I got it in, man. I got my tennis rackets in there. We're going to be having some. See, I have my basketball already in. We're going to be having some fun. This, this ain't no ground back of it, man. This is going to be fun. But that's going to be respectful fun. Is that okay? Ladies and gentlemen, until then, young men are looking so wonderful today. Until then, I look forward to see you. The team looking forward to see you next week as we start the process of rebranding. God bless you, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Chaitan. As we get ready to close, at this time, I invite the newly installed principal of the Grenville Secondary School to do the vote of thanks. Honorable Minister for Education, Human Resource Management, Religious Affairs and Information, Mr. Kevin Andal, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Ms. Cathy and James, District Education Officer, Dr. Niels Chaitin, Program Administrator, Inspector Bascom and other members of the Royal Grenada Police Force, members of District 3 Supervision Team, other officials from the Ministry of Education, management team of the Grenville Secondary, parents, students, specially invited guests, all. I bid you a pleasant good morning. My task here this morning is to say thank you, first and foremost, to God Almighty for giving our Honorable Minister the vision to see, that, to see the need to develop a program to help our at-risk youths and to create a transformation in their lives, to turn them into upstanding model citizens, and for her reassurance to education and developing our nation's youth. To Pastor Niles for invoking God's presence here this morning on the proceedings. To P.S. Andal for his warm, comforting welcome. To Ms. James for enlightening us on the details of the STAR program. To the students and staff of the Grenville Secondary for your cultural presentation. It was indeed enjoyable. Parents, for buying into this program. Without your acceptance, the program can't work. You are one of the key stakeholders here, and I applaud your effort for engaging in such an initiative. To you, I say a special thanks. And I want to say it again. To you, I say a special thanks to see you come out here to support your children. It warms my heart. I know you are 
indeed interested in your child's development and you want to see them make a future for themselves. To the young men, I applaud you for accepting the challenge. All right? As Dr. Dr. Chaitan say, it, it will be enjoyable. All right? You will have fun. I had a preview to some of the things that you all be doing. Trust me, you would like it. Go there with an open mind, accept you want to make a change and you want to make a new future. It is a new lease on your life. Embrace it. It is my heartfelt belief that this program would be a massive, massive success. And I want all persons involved to put every effort into making it that massive success. Once again, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a pleasant day and God bless all. Thank you very much, Mr. Etienne. At this time, I would like to extend thank you again for everyone for taking the time off this morning to be present at this launch with us. And we look forward to your continued support and partnership. I want to thank also the media for your presence here this morning so that it is important that the public know and they are aware of what going on. And a lot of good things are going on here at the Grenville Secondary School and in the Ministry of Education. And very soon, you're going to see some of the benefits of those initiatives that we will be implemented in the new school year. I want to note at this time that everybody present here this morning, all the young men are part of this program, they're willing participants, right? And we gave everybody an opportunity if they were not interested or they wanted to opt out, they had that opportunity. And I'm so happy this morning that you're here, willing and ready to go on September 7th. So thank you so much and I wish you guys a wonderful day and a productive school term. Thank you so much.